at glowscript.org if you sign in with a Google account then you can write programs by I'll say create a new program and I'll call it uh, test and it already provides for me a first line that says we're going to be using the 2.9 version and I guess I should make it bigger right Is that okay and let me write a, a 3D anim a 3D program. This is a five character program. And I'm going to run this program. And when I run it, what I get is a 3D cube. And I can rotate the camera to look at it. I can um, pan back and forth. I can zoom in and out. And this in itself is pretty extraordinary. Most programming environments that do 3D would require pages and pages of the most arcane code imaginable. <laughs> so this is kind of unheard of, and it's what makes it possible for ordinary mortals to write programs that generate not only 3D images, but even 3D animations. And to give an example of that, let me show you a binary star program. Here's a, a binary star program, and I'll make it just a little bit smaller so you can see. It also shows instructions on how to use the camera. And again, and you can zoom, and you can pan, and it's got these mouse controls and all this stuff. And if you look at the program, it's remarkably short. The first few lines are just that text that you saw displayed on the screen. But then, this is a physics program. We define Newton's gravitational constant. We create a sphere object which has a position that's a 3D vector, x, y, and z, x to the right, y up, z out, right-handed. We give it a radius. We give it a color. We say, I want you to leave a trail as it moves, I want to leave the trail behind it of a, the points kind instead of the curve kind, so individual points not connected. Uh, we'll do them every 10 moves, we'll, we'll add another piece to the trail, and we'll retain just the last 50 so that you get sort of like a comet-like trail. And I'll also for the, and we're going to give a name to it giant, and this giant will have a mass, so we can add our own kinds of attributes to this instance of the sphere class called giant and we're also going to give it a momentum which is a vector times its mass and then we create another sphere this time the the trail is by default a curve and and we call it dwarf and it has a smaller mass and it has the negative it starts out having momentum opposite the other one so the total momentum is zero so that this binary star doesn't move through space and then we choose a time interval of 10 to the fifth seconds, and it will write an infinite loop which says, while true, at a rate of 200 iterations per second, so this says clamp the, the iteration so it doesn't go too fast for you to see anything, so no more than 200 inter uh, iter iterations of this while loop per second, no matter how fast your computer happens to be, and here is a vector statement that says, take the position attribute of the dwarf sphere and subtract the position of the giant sphere. And that's a relative vector pointing from one to the other. And the next statement is we calculate the gravitational force. It's big G times the giant's mass times the dwarf's mass times r hat unit vector divided by the magnitude squared of that vector. So I'll notice these are all vector statements. And now the force times that time interval is the impulse, which in the next time interval adds to the current momentum to give the new momentum of the giant. And for the dwarf, it's just with a minus sign because of the reciprocity of the gravitational force. Next, we take as representative of the average velocity, we take the new momentum divided by its mass multiply by the dt is the three-dimensional displacement vector, which added to the current position of the, door, of the giant gives us the new position, and similarly for the dwarf. This is called Euler-Cromer integration. K 
calculate force, calculate the change in momentum, use the new momentum as representative of the average momentum, and oddly enough, that works best. You know, one uh, first order Euler integration, this particular sequence of operations, ten, it preserves phase space, it does a good job of preserving, conserving energy, uh, and being first order, the computers are fast enough that even just this first order stuff, it, they run fast enough. So, the thing we teach our own students about numerical analysis is cut the time step until the, the behavior doesn't change. And, and that's, that's adequate. So, as you can see here, there's a tremendous number of well thought out, well designed defaults. It says, if you want to just make a box, well, we'll set up things to show you a box. We'll set up lighting, etc. And there's also a lot of elements of this programming environment called vPython, syntax of vPython, which are aimed at the task of making navigable real-time 3D animations. And by the way, when you set things up, we're going to create not only some lighting for you, default lighting, we'll also de by default put the camera in a position where you can see the scene and the scene kind of fills the camera view and, and so there, there are elements of the thing that are supportive. Again, writing this program in other 3D environments is off-scale difficult. It's just plain off-scale difficult. There do, of course, exist many environments for creating 3D scenes, static scenes, and, 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 that, and they may be just purely manipulative. You might not even have to write code, um, but to write animations and so on. So that's what vPython is about. What is GlowScript vPython about? At glowscript.org, as you saw, you, you log in, you write your program like this, you run it here, and you can also send somebody that link and they can click on the link and they're running the program. They didn't have to install any software. For students who have not had prior programming experience, GlowScript vPython is a big win. We do also offer the same syntax to be used with installed Python and we sometimes refer to that as vPython 7. But you install Python, you install vPython, which has the same syntax. This program runs there just as well as it runs here. Actually runs faster than GlowScript version than with installed Python because this code gets converted to fast JavaScript instead of being interpreted Python. But that's a detail. So that's what this is about. And when students have used vPython at an introductory level, they're well prepared to go on to using Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab or, or pr more professional tools, but still be able to use the same syntax.